And showtime! Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Channel Pro 25-Minute Roundup. Wait, did I say that out loud? We'll get back to that. What I meant to say was the five-minute roundup. A look at news, trends, and tips for the SMB channel in five minutes or thereabouts. My name is Rick Freeman. I'm executive editor of the Channel Pro Network, also a co-host of this program. I am joined this week, as I am every week, by your other host, Eric Simpson, a business transformation and improvement advisor to MSPs and other IT providers. Eric, how goes it? It goes really well, Rich. Boy, you've got a little bit of a pep in your step today. That's surprising, uh, understanding the busy travel week you've had. Well, it's been it's been a busy travel two weeks, uh, actually, because I was yeah. in uh, Dallas for a, a Channel Pro event, followed immediately by San Francisco for the RSA conference. And then this week I was in uh, Las Vegas for Cisco Live, which we'll be uh, talking about a little bit in, uh, in a moment here. So, yeah, I have been uh, out and about, but uh, I'm back home. Awesome. Welcome home. Thank you very much. And the 25-minute uh, roundup joke there was just an allusion to the fact that the last two episodes we've brought your way have been a little bit longer than the norm. But you just watch, folks. We're going to get right back on track this week. Um, so let's dive right into our uh, story of the week, which is, as I uh, suggested, about Cisco. So the the main reason, I've never actually been to the Cisco Live event before, but the main reason I went this year is because I've been hearing and seeing um, indications that they are getting very serious over there about managed services and MSPs, including uh, in the SMB segment. And I can confirm that this is absolutely the case. I had an opportunity to interview uh, an executive there named Alexandra Zaguri. Her title is Vice President of Managed Services and As a Service Sales. This is a position that did not exist at Cisco um, a, a year plus ago. Um, she's the first person who was put into that post, which was created by her boss, the worldwide channel chief over there. And the reason they created this position, the reason they're making big investments in MSPs right now is they did some uh, market research in-house at Cisco and determined that by 2025, about 45% of their total addressable market, which is to say about $113 billion worth of business will be done as a managed service. Uh, again, by 2025. So they need to get better at working with MSPs and selling managed services to uh, end users with MSPs. And so what Zaguri is doing, she she has uh, what she calls a strategy built around the three Ps uh, to do this, platform, preference, and performance. Platform is about um, getting as many Cisco uh, products as possible managed ready, to use her term. So basically, multi-tenant, um, you know, adding things like role-based access rights, get, getting the position, uh, the products ready to be uh, uh, sold and supported by MSPs. Preference is about turning Cisco into the preferred partner for MSPs, and they are investing heavily in people and programs to do this. So um, uh, she has a whole team that she's been building and is continuing to build around enablement and training and marketing and service creation. They want to go to market with their MSP partners, not just sort of generally, but uh, around specific go-to-market offers that they can bring uh, to an end user, and uh, that takes some work on the Cisco side to partner with the MSP on exactly what that's going to be. They've tripled the size of that service creation team just uh, here in the last year. Um, they have also done some things uh, to remove friction with their field sales force, so there used to be uh, compensation rules in place that might have discouraged uh, the uh, Cisco sales folks from uh, sharing or, or working with MSPs, they've gotten rid of all of that now. Um, the last piece of that, um, though, which is uh, performance, is, is all, you know, all about delivering results. And I, you know, I didn't get um, a lot of very specific numbers from her about uh, the degree of performance that they're producing. But she did say that when she was hired, um, her boss told her that um, you need to grow revenue by 15% um, via MSPs. And she said, Trust me, we're way ahead of that. Um, there was a metric that she was assigned uh, around service creation, and they, she said they stopped counting at 2,150 new offers via uh, MSPs because the, the, uh, they'd kind of blown that number out. So bottom line, Eric, um, you know, Cisco, which is a partner that probably most of the people in our audience partner with, have been partnering with, or at least have been selling, um, you know, their products to their customers, but maybe not working with Cisco um, in their capacity as an MSP. Uh, and Cisco would very much like to change that if you are an MSP today. They they want 
uh, MSPs of all sizes, from the very smallest to the very biggest, uh, to be working with them. And they are putting their money where their mouth is. They're spending big to make themselves a more attractive partner for MSPs. Well, welcome to the show, Cisco. I mean, Rich, this uh, takes me back, you know, back when I had my MSP practice in the early 2000s. We were a Cisco Silver partner. We, you know, we were, we, we had lots of clients uh, running on Cisco gear. And, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting that now is when they've decided to recognize, I think, something that a lot of other um, vendors in the channel have recognized. Maybe they recognize, but actually put a plan together and started putting budget behind helping these MSP partners build these, uh, you know, uh, sales strategies together with their teams. And I think we spoke uh, maybe a couple of episodes ago about, you know, strategies uh, through partner sales strategies and things like that, vendors working with MSP partners and, and the adjustments that need to be made to make that successful. You noted that, you know, they've made some adjustments to the comp plan. They probably established some sort of sales quotas, so much percentage of sales going through partners and things like that. And these are kind of the, uh, you know, the best practices of really uh, gaining momentum and traction and in, in building trust and confidence with a partner channel to, um, you know, influence and encourage them to sell together through um, through their channel reps, uh, the vendors, you know, sales teams and all that. So I'm I'm really excited to hear this. This is great news. I mean, Cisco, nobody ever, as they say in the industry, right? nobody ever got fired for, you know, uh, deploying Cisco gear. So this is uh, great. And I look forward to, uh, you know, covering uh, the developments as we move forward. I mean, Cisco has always been a great partner to uh, its uh, partners and uh, new, a new era for the MSPs. One quick final note before we move on. Um, one of the things that they are very straightforward about at Cisco, and they certainly were at the conference, I mean, strikingly straightforward about it. They freely admit that it is a big, complex company, not always easy to do business with or for your partner. And one of the things they called attention to, one of the investments that they've made in this MSP initiative is uh, they've created a, a uh, automated self-serve tool called Partner Journeys. And it's basically designed to onboard you as an MSP partner. If you're, you know, th there are bigger MSPs who will get like a partner account manager for probably most of the people in the audience here, that won't be the case. But if you uh, Google Cisco Partner Journeys, you'll probably find your way to this tool and it'll sort of step you through what you need to do uh, to start working with them. So um, they are trying to lower that barrier to entry uh as well so eric that that's all about onboarding but your tip of the week uh, has to do with boarding i believe yes you're right rich it's it's uh it's about offboarding so uh i i would assume that the majority of our channel pros and msps have an onboarding process just like you indicated cisco is building for its partners uh to bring on new clients but it is just as important to have a documented, formalized offboarding process as well. You know, Rich, we've talked on the show before about, you know, uh, you know, growing your uh, your a client base by continuing to, um, you know, uh, deliver more valuable services potentially at a higher budget, maybe outgrowing some of your, you know, trend more transactional. Uh, clients, you know, we talk about segmenting clients in, into a pyramid where you have your A clients, kind of the smallest third of the pyramid at the very top, maybe your B clients a little bit, uh, you know, broader in the middle part of the pyramid, but maybe you have a lot of C customers taking up the bottom. And, you know, our ideal um, growth strategy is to continue to raise our rates with new clients over time and potentially um, uh, you know, uh, help these C customers who may not be a fit for our new maturing services, or maybe it's a budget issue, or maybe they're just not a good fit, uh, help them find other homes. And in that strategy, we should have a formalized documented process on how to exit. And this can also serve when, you know, clients outgrow us as well, right? We want to make sure that that client feels like we have handled that transition with you know, professionalism, 
uh, with a good uh, going away strategy with them. And that includes, Rich, delivering to them an exit package, which includes you know, all of their passwords, their asset inventory, documentation about any licensing and things like that, that they need in order to make a smooth transition, either to an internal person that they've brought on board or to transition to another service provider. And you know, Rich, when I've done that in the past and my MSP, clients have, have you know, come back later, right? They, they've realized that moving away from us, if, if they felt like they had outgrown us, wasn't the right move in some cases, maybe they weren't satisfied with that new provider and they've come back because it made an impression. And how many clients, you know, uh, I'm speaking to our channel pros in the audience right now, how many clients when you take over from an incumbent or an existing MSP or IT service provider delivers all of that documentation to your clients, right? I can't tell you how many times, Rich, I've, you know, we've had to, you know, try to discover passwords or reset passwords or do all of all of these extra activities because the existing or the exiting provider did not document anything or turn anything over to clients. And in fact, I've had a few situations where they have held the client hostage with that information. Not a good look uh, going away. The, you know, the key word that you used there was um, professionalism, and um, that's what I think is so important about this. I, I'm quite certain nobody in our audience would ever do this kind of thing, Eric, but I have heard tell uh, of unprofessional MSPs out there more or less literally ghosting their, their clients. You know, it's like you retire, you go out of business, you disconnect the phones, and they're on their own. And that that kind of behavior, or even less extreme versions of that behavior, that hurts everybody. Basically... Okay. Um, businesses out there come to think about that kind of behavior as being synonymous with MSPs. And so anyone out there uh, who calls themselves uh, an MSP is going to, you know, suffer as a result. So it's the right thing to do um, for your client. Um, I, I do think it will um, win you a, a better reputation with the client. And so even if you're not doing business with that company anymore, they could still be a source of referrals to you. You want to leave them with a good taste in your mouth, but you also want to do that just for the benefit of the other uh, channel pros out there so that, um, you know, it, your conduct doesn't give the entire uh, industry a bad name. And you did remind, you remind me, Rich, that, yeah, we actually did have clients that, you know, we exited or they exited from us and, and were referring business to us after the fact. Last point in the, you know, in the exit process, make certain that you get the client to sign a release, you know, clearly indicating the, the, the end of service date and releasing you from any further responsibility and you know, nice handshake. And maybe if they've been a great client and you want to maintain that, you know, that good relationship, maybe send them a little, you know, basket of cookies or something, thanking them for being your client. I mean, what a classy way to, to handle uh, a, a business relationship that is coming to an end. Very nice touch. And uh, it leaves us with time for, just one more story here. Now, Eric, I like I like chocolate. I like chocolate uh, as as much as the next person. I wouldn't consider myself a a chocolate fanatic, but I know that there are some people out there probably who are. And so I, I want to read you uh, this headline from Reuters exactly as it was published earlier this week. Quote: Two rescued from chocolate vat at Pennsylvania Mars Inc. candy factory and. This is exactly what happened, folks. This was, um, when was this? This was Thursday, last Thursday. Two workers at a Mars chocolate factory somehow wound up inside a vat of chocolate. Um, they were there. Uh, nobody knows how they got in. So we don't know if they kind of dived in or fell in, but they were in a vat of swimming in chocolate, Eric, for about 75, 80 minutes until uh, the local fire department was able to get them out of there. Uh, it, it was the word rescued that I think jumped out at me from the headline here, because there are some people out there who would really rather stay in the chocolate vat. Well, Rich, I guess the secret is out now. Oompa Loompas are real. Look it up if you don't know what the, that's about, but I'm pretty sure most of you do. 
Well, folks, that is all the time we've got this week for you on the Five Minute Roundup. Um, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to be back again next week with another episode for you. Um, we are both a video and a podcast these days. So if you happen to be watching the video, but you do listen to podcasts as well, go to wherever you get the rest of your podcasts, whether that's Stitcher, Spotify, Google, Apple, wherever you're going to find us there. You can subscribe. And if you rate and review as well, that'll help your peers out there find us. We would certainly appreciate it. If you are listening to the podcast, now, but you want to check us out on video, best thing to do is go to YouTube, look for us on the Channel Pro Network channel there. Um, again, you can subscribe, and if you click that little bell icon, you're going to see we'll even uh, make sure you get notified when new episodes go up. Um, you can read my coverage of what Cisco is doing uh, in the uh, MSP market right now and some other Cisco live coverage. You can get great business growth advice for your company every day at channelpronetwork.com. We've got terrific new content for you going live every day at that site. If you want to learn more about Eric and the work he does with his client, your destination should be ericsimpson.com. That is E-R-I-C-K simpson.com once again we thank you very much for joining us we're going to see you again next week ladies and gentlemen and until then please have a great week eric and i are enjoying the rest of your week already already <laughs>